Hi, I'm Dan Simonson. I'm a certified health and wellness coach, and I am certified in plant-based nutrition, the lifestyle medical practice that I have been a coach with for five years is where I have learned and absolutely convinced myself beyond question that a whole food plant-based diet is the way to longevity. I'm 70, well, I was gonna say 73. I'm a month away from turning 73 and I feel like in these five years I've aged backwards. So let's talk about something. Do you love rice? Have you had cauliflower rice? Do you love mushrooms? Do you love cream of mushroom soup? Can you imagine putting those together? Well, I'm gonna be making something that Juliana Kiever has on her channel, The Plant-Based Dietitian. And I'm gonna read what she wrote about it. Um, here is my all-time favorite recipe. I recently stumbled upon it in my kitchen since it is chock full of a myriad of mushrooms and brewing with Thanksgiving autumnal flavors. It was love at first bite. Here it is months later and I'm still eating it almost every day. Doesn't that sound good? So we're going to be making a creamy mushroom cauliflower rice. Are you ready? If you have used cauliflower rice before, I don't mean that, riced cauliflower before, you know that it is very, very fine. You can buy it in packages. This is a pound of it. And I bought a big cauliflower and broke up part of it. And I'm gonna recommend something to make kitchen work easier. A lot of recipes will call for a certain amount of something like two stalks of celery, five carrots, um, uh, well, here, a pound of cauliflower. The cauliflower I bought, I'm sure it was about two, two and a half pounds. It was really quite large because when I took off that pound, it was still very large. So this was so helpful because this is a Weight Watcher scale. I looked on Amazon. You can get these things or similar that, that measure ounces and, um, uh, uh, Oh, what am I trying to say? Grams, grams and ounces, because you will get some recipes that call for X number of grams of things. And they start at $9, but get yourself a scale. And the nice ones are the ones that zero out. And I think just about all of them do. I put this bowl on here, zeroed it out, and then I was able to break up my cauliflower and I got a pound, which is what I was aiming for. Now, what is this? This is the base of my blender and I'll show you that in just a bit when we blend up something else that's going to go in this recipe. But I wanna make my cauliflower rice. I don't have it from, well, from, well, I could have gotten it at a number of places. The Trader Joe's that's three minutes from my home from, I think maybe Costco has them, but I didn't look. I like cauliflower very fresh and if those finely chopped products sit around a while, they start getting a rather, I'll use the word heady <laughs> flavor. Okay, so this is my Vitamix, a, and this is the um, attachment for a food processor, or as a, it's my food processor attachment. There, okay. Now, come on, do it, do it. Uh, what's wrong? I don't know if I have the that on well. Okay, let's do it again. Man, what is the problem? Let's see. Really? Honestly? Are you having a fit? <coughs> there. will show you what I have. And again, you could have bought this, I don't know if it's a one pound bag or a 12 ounce bag, but you could have bought this and here we are. So that is my cauliflower rice. I'll take this away. Well, actually, I'm gonna leave this right here. Take this away. I'm gonna be moving you to the stove in a minute. 
But now let's move over the next part of the recipe. Made the cauliflower rice, I bought it. This is my Vitamix. Love this blender because it is so strong, it liquefies things very easily. For example, what I'm gonna be putting in here is nutritional yeast. And if you're not familiar with it, nutritional yeast is for a whole food plant-based person, a way to get umami, that very mm, delicious flavor that is in this case somewhat cheesy. And I buy this brand that is not fortified. No, uh, normally I buy a much bigger package than this. This I got at a health fair and of course I took it. Uh, Superfood, nutritional yeast, not fortified means that they're not adding folate to it. Um, I can have folic acid. I want folic acid for my foods. I don't want folate, which is synthetic. Um, uh, it doesn't work in my body and a lot of people don't want the fortification. They just want the natural food. So we have nutritional yeast. I also have some seasonings like poultry seasoning. This is from Frontier Co-op and there's the poultry seasoning. I have some chili flakes and I have, whoops, just covered it up, some freshly ground pepper. I also have lemon juice and um, apple cider vinegar and I just fibbed it to you because I was out of apple cider vinegar so I used rice vinegar, why not? And then I have a half a cup of cashew pieces. If you do a lot with cashews to make things creamy and a whole food plant-based um, uh, with your dietary style, buy them in pieces. They're less expensive than buying the whole cashew and um, it's the same thing. And then I have arrowroot. And what is that? That's gonna help thicken my soup. And I have a combination of, and if you haven't seen this before, this is Worcester sauce, but it's vegan, which means it doesn't have the anchovies that most uh, Worcester sauce has. And it's a combination of Worcester, sure, <laughs> sauce and um, tamari. Uh, I use tamara because it's gluten-free. You can use soy sauce. Um, and I buy my tamari this way from Amazon, this big, what is it, two-quart container because it's far less expensive than these little bottles. This was the bottle that I used to buy and I would go through it so quickly. Well, I just took the label off, bought that one, labeled it up here, tamari, and that's one way that I can keep Tamari around all the time. We have a refrigerator in the garage, which helps um, hold things like that. In a regular refrigerator, it might not be that convenient. So this is a tablespoon of Tamari, and it's a tablespoon of um, the Worcester. Sure, <laughs> some sauce. And that has such a strong, wonderful flavor. And then I'm adding two cups of plant milk. In this case, it's almond milk. If you wanna crank up the protein in this recipe, then um, use soy milk at nine grams of protein per cup. I would have just added 18 grams of protein. And as we get older, we need to crank it up a little bit. But I'm following the recipe, I'm just doing what she said. So I am going to blend this. This is gonna be noise bit, I'm blending for a minute. Oh, let's see. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna blend this for a minute because I don't wanna see, or two, I don't wanna see any of this in here, the little speckles, I'll be pushing it down. You don't have to listen to all of that. The next time I see you, I will have moved you over to my cooking area and I'll have this to put into the, um, the cauliflower rice uh, when it's time. So I'll be back to you in just a moment. Okay, I'm back. So I have a pan already heated, no oil in here because I and Juliana don't add oil to our food. We go with 
whole food that is plant-based, oils are processed, we don't need the calories, we don't need the fat, we don't need the, um, the addition of anything else besides the whole food. And it's healthier that way, better for cardiovascular health. All right, so dry pan, the onions are weeping. And I'm going to let them weep for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to add, um, oh, celery, chopped celery. That was chopped, that was a chopped medium onion. I'm going to add a chopped jalapeno. This one is red. I grow it and when they get to a certain degree of um, ripeness, they turn red. But I also had some smoked hatch chilies that I threw in, that I had in the freezer that I threw in. And then, what about, and it's doing fine, I've added nothing to it. What about this, what's that? Well, it's a, it's a tablespoon of minced garlic, but if you wanna do something kind of fun, at, at um, Costco, I bought a pound and a half of peeled garlic. What do you do with that? Well, I did what Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook does and you you can look this up just google tammy or nutmeg notebook roasted garlic and the i did just what she said pressed the cooked garlic into once it was roasted into my little silicone pans or not pans but um ice cube trays let me show you kind of wet because i rinsed it all off love these I do it, I use it for tomato paste when I open a big can and I want to store it, freeze it, pop them out and put them in a freezer bag. Well, this held, I don't know if I was doing a pound of the garlic or what it was, her recipe says, and then I filled, I, I think I counted about eight or nine when in each of these, of the roasted garlic, pop them out, put them in a baggie. Well, this called for a tablespoon, which was, um, that and some, it was more than, oh, I don't know, it was maybe eight or nine or 10 or 11. But I'm going to, you see the color of this? I soaked some mushrooms because, as her recipe says, use any combination of mushrooms you want. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute, but I'm softening this onion. And by dehydrating um, the mushrooms that needed to be uh, re or by hydrating mm -hmm. by rehydrating the mushrooms that were dry I got a broth that broth can be used in Japanese cooking mainly for shiitake mushrooms um, but I used porcini and shiitake that were dry the I didn't save one to show you and I'm sorry for that the shiitake is a little saucer shaped mushroom that's rather flat. It's really leathery, but marvelous raw. And, and dehydrated, it's even more, um, I'll call it rustic, uh, darker color and rustic. And I buy them by the bag, keep them dehydrated, but I also buy fresh shiitake mushrooms. The porcini I always buy dried like this, dried porcini mushrooms and the pound of them, which lasts forever. Porcini is so strong that you don't want to use a lot because it's very smoky and it's very um, intense. This is what, they, they're just little slivery pieces that are in that bag dried out. And once it's rehydrated, I just chop them for just a little bit of flavor. Now, I'm gonna throw in well, let me show you how nicely brown this is. Not burnt brown, I added that broth. It could have been water, it could have been just a veggie broth. But every time I do that, it bubbles up and it deglazes the pan. Now for the celery, just a minute. Turn it up a bit. 
So what brought this all about? Well, I went to, I had another meal plan today. We were in New Mexico for five days saying hello to a new grandbaby born two weeks before and three weeks early. And everything's good, the baby's a great size and just, it, well, seven pounds, eight ounces, um, three weeks early, so you know <laughs> that baby wanted out of there. And he came out just beautifully. So we were there, came home, and just um, refreshing the, the, the um, refrigerator with fresh things. And I went to Costco, and I saw chanterelles. Chanterelles. Chanterelles are, well, there are a number of mushrooms they're calling a chanterelle now, but they're all in that same genus. But look at this beauty. They're golden, they have these, these gills. Um, I chopped, well, when I bought them, I bought, where's my little label? They had them at Costco of all things. They were $13.99 for a pound, and you might say, oh man, that's ridiculous. How could you spend that much on mushrooms? Well, a lot of the wild or the specialty mushrooms are that high, but you spend that if you're buying a number of other kinds of food. Well, if you were buying meat, you'd be spending that like that, and we don't do meat. So I treat myself for things like this, or with things like this, but they are wild golden chant. And I don't, I call them chanterelles, some people call them chanterelles, but I, um, I knew somebody that was a mushroomer that went into the wild and got them, and she called them chanterelles. And this is the porcini, uh, a picture of the porcini from that bag, and I'll put that in the bag. Okay, so everything is looking great. This is all I had to do to cook this down, and most recipes would have said add three or four or five tablespoons of oil, which would have added three, four, five, ta uh, well, actually, 600 or more calories uh, for no reason at all. And I don't count calories. I don't weigh, I don't measure, I don't count calories, I stay the same, even though I'm getting older. <laughs> but since starting plant-based, it's so easy. On a whole food, plant-based, not quite SOS-free diet. SOS means salt, oil, sugar. I don't eat processed sugar. I use date paste to sweeten my desserts, uh, desserts that I make, and I I add a little bit of salt, but I don't add oil. Okay. Oh, well, that's not true. If I were going to use this pan to, let's say, toast some um, tofu cubes, I would, I have a little spray bottle of avocado oil because it's the one that takes the highest heat. Oil, uh, olive oil only takes three, 375 or less before it hits a smoke point, and you don't want to eat it that way. So I'll spray it on and then, and then wipe it off. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do with that. Now, I'm gonna add my mushrooms, look. This was 40 ounces of mushrooms. This is a crimini. Again, I got these, this is why I got so inspired at Trader Joe, at um, Costco, because I already had a meal that I pulled out of my freezer and it was for pozzoli tonight. I was going to do pozzoli and Mexican rice, and it was going to be wonderful. And then I saw the chanterelles, and I thought, oh, I have to get those. When do I ever see those in the stores? And that was $14, $13.99 for a pound of them. That's great. And then the, the baby bells, baby portobello uh, mushrooms, a, one and a half pounds for $5.99. That's crazy. Of, and organic, that's the big deal. I live by a number of whole food type stores, Sprouts and Clark's, and their organic mushrooms all started about $7 a pound and up to 12, 13, 14 dollars a pound. You go to a farmer's market, you're going to experience the same thing. So I am letting all of this now cook down. And I'm going to give that just a little bit of time. Um, did I add the garlic? No. Let me add the garlic. See, this is a paste, and it's going to take a little bit to get it 
it's a paste now because when they are when garlic is roasted it becomes very soft it becomes rather sweet it loses that strident tone that a raw garlic would and that's why you can use a lot of it even though this recipe didn't call for oh you know what i have to chop this little guy up okay um, let me see how much time I'm going to give this. And we're going to let them sweat down for a bit. So it's going to be three to five minutes or more. Well, let me tell you a little about myself. I am a certified health and wellness coach and certified in uh, plant-based nutrition from uh, E. Cornell, uh, T. Colin Campbell's course there. And I wrote three years ago, aging powerfully. I was about to turn 70 and I thought, oh boy, here I go into the beginning of the end. And then I thought, that's not so. Based on what I had seen daily at my lifestyle medical practice, people who were whole food plant-based, but more important, practice lifestyle as medicine rather than allopathic. I've got a pain doctor here, take this pill. I've got a quirky thing here, do this procedure. Pills and procedures, if they are absolutely necessary, make sense, but so often they're not necessary. This is what I see all the time. People coming off of um, their diabet oh, I forgot my porcinis, uh, off of metformin, uh, people coming off of high blood pressure medicine, people coming or uh, recovering from type two diabetes. Um, and I could go on and on, some very dramatic stories with patients that I have worked with through the years. Can you imagine how good this is going to be? These mushrooms are breaking down, they're starting to weep, and I'm going to be adding the riced cauliflower and what I ended up with when I turned off the video was this creamy, flavorful. It's amazingly flavorful. Uh, well, what's going to make this a creamed kind of a, uh, a rice um, dish, I'm adding to it then fresh, take this out of my garden. That's thyme and this is rosemary. So I chopped up some fresh thyme and rosemary. I will, well, I'll put these in a minute. At the very end, I'm gonna throw in some chopped kale. All of this per Juliana Heaver. I have a number of her books. Um, you might wanna look her up. She, everything she makes, she does beautifully. And again, I was looking at this recipe the other day. I saw these mushrooms. I said, forget pozzoli, that's tomorrow. We're gonna do Jul Juliana's. All right, I think this is enough. Probably I should give it a full five minutes, but I'm not going to. I just wanna show you what's going to happen because then I'm gonna cook it 20 minutes. I heard my husband just got home and he was thinking we're gonna have pozzoli. The first time I was able to eat pozzoli, whole food plant-based, was in New Mexico, seeing the first baby that was born there um, four years ago. And there was a restaurant that had vegan, or vegetarian they called it, but it was vegan, uh, pozzoli. And pozzoli uses hominy, it's, it's corn, uh, with a flavorful broth if you get it made well. And it's absolutely delicious. So I have a pozzoli that's on my channel and I make it in lots and lots. If you're gonna make anything, make lots and lots, and then just eat it again when you pull it out of your freezer library. That's what I call it, a freezer library. We got home just two days ago, and I had that out, and again, we'll have it tomorrow. Look how beautiful this is. If you love mushrooms, you're um, salivating. <laughs> because this is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to put the um, riced cauliflower in here. And I saw from my blending that there were some, well, when I say larger chunks, I mean, you know, 
know, something like that, instead of everything very finely cut and um, good. It'll add that much more texture. So I'm going to put this in here. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything else. We're gonna add the sauce. The kale comes at the very end. And I'll bring you back to show you the end product. And I have something I'm gonna serve with it. I'll show you this. This is also from Trader Joe's. If you're in a part of the world and you don't know what that is, it's kind of a, I'm gonna call it a quirky store. They have this, this it, it, they have marvelous things, very few options, one or two kinds of, or brands, but a lot of their things are self-branded. Like this is Trader Joe's Root Vegetable Fries. It's roasted sweet potato, carrots, beets, and parsnips. And I'm gonna put it in my air fryer. So we're going to have this and then this air fried, I'll call it the starch part, because this is not a starch base. What are we eating? Mushrooms that have next to no calories, cauliflower that has next to no calories. This wouldn't fill us up. And we'll probably have a glass of soy milk with it to boost up the protein. The mushrooms have protein, um, but I think we're gonna wanna boost that, or we'll put some nut butter on a some real crunchy bread, and that might be really good. Okay, covering it up, giving it 20 minutes. Take a look. This is what it looks like with the cauliflower, and now we're just going to cook it down. So we are going to have a giant bowl with a mound of this, and then the crispy root vegetables on the side. So we'll get back to you in a bit. Uh, hi, I'm bringing you back for a moment because I left off a step, and that is the sauce. Yes, I could have cooked the cauliflower without it, but it would have been a very, very different end result. Okay, and what does this have in it? Remember what will thicken it it has arrowroot, so it's going to be creamy, thick, mushroomy, and actually rather nourishing. I forgot about that because we have the protein from the nuts, the protein from the nutritional yeast, so you may not need anything more than this. All right, now you'll see. Okay, and we'll see what happens as it cooks, and then after I put the, um, the kale, I'm gonna simmer it, and then turn it down. All right, be back to you. Excuse me. Okay, we're done. Look at this. Look at how luscious this looks. Can you see that? creamy, rich, not a drop of additional butter, oil, olive oil, fat of any kind, not needed. I'm going to stir in, oh, let me see. I don't know if I wanna put all of this in, let me see. It'll wilt right away. Yep, I do. And I pulled the cover off halfway through because I saw that it wasn't, that there was too much moisture in it. Okay, oh my gosh, this looks so good. All right, so I'm gonna show you what we're going to have for dinner. These are the air fried um, carrot, beet, and parsnip roots that I simply bought frozen and put in my air fryer. I could have easily cut them myself from the fresh vegetables. That was super simple. We're going to have a tomato salad. These are right off the vine. What's dripping is a reduced balsamic vinegar. So it's simply sliced tomato with some red onion and balsamic over it and a little bit of basil from my garden. And then the piesto resistance. I walked away from it on purpose to let that kale soften sufficiently. Oh, 
a sprig of rosemary, and we have a beautiful meal. Thank you for joining me. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Look at Juliana Heber, the, the um, plant-based dietitian, and look at her website. I'll have a link for you. And thank you, Juliana. This is gorgeous. Bon appetit. Consider my book. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and have a great day. I know I'm going to. Bye-bye.